Hit me. So I've gone over it with naphtha and a magic eraser and this is the area primarily what I've been going over the plate fill with and as you can see it's no longer like turning brown with dirt and grime or worse yet any kind of coloring from the paint on the artwork on the plate fill. So this is a good indicator of knowing that you've got all the dirt and grime off your plate fill is whenever your magic eraser is no longer picking anything up. So this is a pretty good indication that this has been scrubbed pretty darn well when it comes to removing any excess dirt and debris. Well, now I normally wouldn't do this with an older play field or over inserts. But due to the fact the play field's in pretty damn good condition, I was able to just pull it off like that. So, yay. Went and got some more canned air and I'm now going to attempt to take off this piece right here. This is the one that's making me more nervous than anything else. Uh, this area takes kind of a beating when it comes to the ball slamming down right about here. I'm just hoping that it doesn't take any of the, uh, the inserts artwork with it. Just as I was afraid of, the exact area that takes the biggest beating right there on that insert came with it. This little hunk of stuff right here. I wonder if I can get that out of here. Yeah, a little bit. It's honestly not too bad. Getting some clear in there might actually help it. I'll have to clean it up and see. All right, the next area we have is right about here and on the other end lane as well. They put those there for when the ball drops down uh, from the ramps to make sure it doesn't slam real hard. Uh, I'm gonna need something to get up underneath that. I lifted it, then I gotta get back up underneath it. All right. There we go. Small area right there.
we go. And I believe that is all the mylar removed from this play field. All right, so here we have the chipped veneer to the insert right here, as you can see. Obviously, it's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like the rest of these, but we're going to do our best to repair this. Now, in order to do this, I need to obviously get this to go back down again because it's been lifted, and that's why we're getting the ghosting as you see right there. Now, how I'm going to go about doing this is by using clear coat. I can't get that on the camera, but I'm going to use this clear coat with the activator. And just a small amount, I'm going to mix up just enough to get, literally, I just need like a drop in there. But I'm not going to just drop it on there. I'm going to utilize this nice handy dandy syringe to make sure I get up underneath there. And once I squirt just a little bit that I need in there, I'm going to utilize this wax paper and then I'm going to get it all pushed down using this 12 inch clamp, which I realize now I need to make more room for so there's no issues getting it on top there. All right. All right, so let's get the clear all made up. And I've already wiped down this area very well, including actually getting naphtha in that area. So all I need to do now is just mix up literally just a small amount of a clear coat with the activator and we'll get started. All right, I've got just my little bit of clear coat. That's all I really need. That's more than what I need, honestly. I just needed a little bit, but just a real quick get this stuff stirred up in there. Then utilizing my fine tip syringe. I'm just going to press this suck, sucker down. And we'll clamp it right there in position. And I'll let that sit there probably just overnight just to make sure it's good to go. And then we'll check on it. Alright, some time has passed and... Another good way to make sure that it's time to go ahead and lift it is to take out the whatever container that you used for your clear coat and make sure that the clear coat residual is all nice and hardened up and not still a, a gooey or gelatin form. And since it's not, then I believe we should be good to go on releasing this. Now, whenever I peel away this wax paper, I want to make sure I go in the same direction, like this direction, away from the, where it was starting to lift. And there we go. Not too bad. That is down, so it's not lifting up here anymore. And then whenever I clear coat, it's gonna cover this up really nicely. And we, of course, I'm gonna be doing some sanding, so. All right, good. That was the only insert that I was really concerned about. And it turned out pretty good. I've got still a little bit around the top right here. But honestly, that can actually just be just a little bit touched up with some black around the border because that's what's already around there and it won't even be noticeable at all. All right, we're getting the play field prepped for uh, laying down the first coat of clear, but in order for the clear to really stick to the play field, I need to scuff it up a little bit. Um, if it's too smooth, then the clear is not gonna have anything to grab onto, no tooth. So I'm gonna be giving this play field some tooth. I'm using 1000 grit sandpaper I'm just going to be going over it. I don't need to like 
get down like I'm trying to remove anything. It's just more to give it, get it kind of scuffed up to where the clear coat's gonna adhere to it. So I'm gonna start at the top right here. It's gonna go over everything that I'm able to access. This is 1000 grit in case I haven't already specified. Down the shooter lane real well. All the way down here in the apron. That should be plenty to rough it up some. Now I'm gonna get some uh, naphtha and get it all cleaned off again. All right, I've already gave it one once over to get all the extra bulky debris that may be on there removed. I'm now gonna take it into the kill room and we're gonna do another wipe down and that's gonna give you a good idea of what the play is gonna look like once it's clear coated. All right, so I've got my naphtha and I got a microfiber cloth. Now watch the big difference that you're going to see right here. Mainly up here I can see on the camera. All right, guys, I just laid down a couple of spray coats and I wanted to give you guys a visual and I'm hoping it'll come up on the camera here, but you can already see where the clear is working its way down into the crevices and the, there you go, there's one right there in the center of the play field. You can see where the clear is working its way into where there's any low areas on the play field like where inserts there's another one right there any kind of low spot this clear is gonna find it but that is what it looks like right now some low areas right around there where there's some planking and stuff it's gonna find it going to bring out any kind of dimple or blemish or cut or anything in this play field. I'm trying not to hover directly over the play field because I don't want to drop my phone or any kind of particle onto it. So, going to wait a couple of minutes and I'm going to throw down another coat on top of this. All right, here we go. First coat is officially down. I'm really liking how it's turned out so far. It's definitely going to need a good sanding like every first coat does. But I don't know... I'm probably going to have to do an eye drop in this area right here where this this is a very low spot in the play field from all the times that the ball has been dropped. So I'm probably going to have to do an eye drop on that. Let me see if I see anything else that's got a, a need for an eye drop. I see where there's some inserts that have gone down a little bit, but... I may eye drop there too. We'll just see how far down it goes. I'm going to wait a little while. Alright guys. Looking pretty good. I'm going to let it sit here for a bit and come back and check on it and see where I need to put some eye drops at. Yay!
So the play field's been cleared. It's been sanded. But now I need to start doing any kind of touch-ups that I'm going to do. So what I plan to do is mask off all of these uh, switch slots right here. Because they look pretty bad. So I'm going to be masking off all of these and my shooting uh, shooting lane over here. And this one up here. And this one up here. And I'm going to be repainting them. Now, a method that I can use also is just literally cutting out a small segment of this brisket and covering up and then all that kind of stuff and junk. But I'm actually just going to use one giant piece to cover the entire play field that does two things. That masks anything that I do not want to get paint on. And it also gives me the ability to see the entire play field and cut where I need to cut. So, and I've got a whole roll of this. I've had this for years now. So, I'm, I'm, not, too, I'm not scared of using a whole bunch of it. So, we're just going to cover the entire play field with this frisket. Now, I don't have to worry greatly about digging too deep. Obviously, I don't want to go into like real deep into the wood. But uh, I need to make sure I cut deep enough to where I'm cutting out the frisket. So, since I'm going to be painting my shooter lane, let me start right here. And the amount of pressure I've got going down is almost just like the weight of my arm in controlling where I want this blade to go is merely like controlling just a little twist is all it takes. And that is the shooter lane. Alright, and I just gotta rinse and repeat all of that around all of these. gotten these four and my shooter lane done. Oh my god, this is gonna suck. Alright guys, we are ready to start airbrushing on the white, which is gonna be our base coat. When you're airbrushing, you want your first coat to be opaque white because that will allow the other colors on top to be their true colors without any other bleeding through of the natural wood or anything like that. So, I use Createx. It's available at your Hobby Lobby or online like Amazon or anything like that. Hope we got enough air to do all of this. I just got finished doing a real quick little just go over with the heat gun to kind of dry it a little bit. And uh, I may go over it one more time with a coat, but I may not. I don't know. I'm going to have to wait a little bit and see what we get from it. All right, I'm much more pleased with the color and everything on here. I'm now going to be using a light transparent brown to uh, go over the shooter lane to give that a little bit more of a... Uh, realistic look so that's what we look like now 
Obviously, this is all my test areas. This is from Frisket, so this is not going to be on the play field. So remember that. But uh, I like this color so much more. It's going to look so much better. But uh, all right, I think we're ready to remove the Frisket now, guys. We're going to see how we did. We'll start from up here on the top area. this particular switch slot. So far we're looking pretty good. That slot looks a hell of a lot better than what it did. That's for damn sure. And it'll look even better once it gets clear coated. Alright, so let us continue here. got the black touched up we've got this small section in this teal color right here in the corner and I was gonna do my best on color matching and just filling that one little spot in uh, I'm wretched when it comes to color matching I, I it depends if it's a solid color then I can do it but if it's some special off tone like this teal or a gray, then it is horrible to try to match this. This, is, this has got like a just the right amount of blue and maybe even a touch of green in there. And it's just no fun to try to match these things a lot of the times. So I've got a couple of options that I could do here. I could mask off and paint all new blue on these triangles. It's just, this is called the Mentos, okay? I'm calling it the Mentos version because if you can't match at least one segment, then redo all of it so it all looks the same. I don't know if you guys remember the Mentos commercials or not where this guy sat on a park bench and he put straps on just the bottom portion, so he popped a Mentos and he got the right idea to make the rest of his suit all striped to match, so therefore it just looked like that's the way it's supposed to be. So, what I'm actually going to do is mask off, and I'm going to cut out a little segment in this corner here, the, here, and right here, and do a white. And it's going to give them all a certain little segment of white right there, and it's going to make it look like it's legitimately, that's the way it's supposed to look. Uh, there's been certain plenty of games, even on Williams, where they do like a little white segment on certain inserts just to give them what like like they're shining or something like that kind of look but um a lot of games will do certain things like that just a little small segment of white to make it stand out a little bit better and that's what we're going to do here so i'm going to frisk it over these cut out a small little section in the same area on all three of these shoot it with some white and then it should blend in so that's what we're going to do now all right, so I've got everything masked off. This right here is from me making sure that my nozzle is clear of any uh, black color from the previous. And so now we should be able to just... All right, let's see if our Mentos worked out. Mentos, the fresh maker. <laughs> now, whenever the clear goes down, guys, this is going to look even better. So, you can see where the paint's outlining on certain things, but once the clear goes down, it'll all be nice and shiny and blend in. Damn, that came out pretty good. Ugh. We are at the cusp of humidity being too high. It's gone down a couple of degrees since I've got the, the fans going and the garage door open, but we've got rain on the way, guys. Uh, 
but I'm thinking I might be able to put down this last and final coat before it gets too bad. So this is what the play field looks like at this time before the final coat goes down. Here we go. All right, as much as I would like to say that this thing is ready to set for a while, it's not gonna need a final sanding then cut and polish polish won't come till probably maybe a month from now but uh gonna have to sand it it's not perfect so we're gonna get it all nice and level and then we're gonna let it sit for a while all right we just did 800 grit across the play field the only areas that are low are where the ball is not going to be rolling so i'm not concerned with that so where there's going to be posts or bulbs those are my low spots ball's not going to be rolling there i don't care that's going to polish up and just and you're, you're never going to even notice that a difference at all in that so that's where we're at on that so 800 is done now i'm going to move up to Let's see, I think I've got a thousand. If I don't have a thousand, then I'll go up to 12. All right, we are sanded up to 3,000 grit. And if you want to know what that looks like, and here you go. This is where we're going to bring the sanding to a halt and allow the rest of this play field to cure fully all the way through. Other than that, looks pretty damn good. I'm very happy with it. 